one of those individuals who has misinformed people is a Sheikh Imran Hussein. Many people are aware of a Sheikh Imran Hussein who has lectures on eschatology and on the end of times, but there is a lot of misinformation in his lectures especially from the aspect of the ahadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam now because his methodology is flawed he ends up making blunders and mistakes which are critical are critical mistakes we will analyze one uh, video of his which is this particular clip we turn now to this exciting part of the subject the first page of history. And it's such a pity that we don't have our Orthodox Christian brothers here with us. Because it will do them well to hear what the Quran has to say about the first page of history. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human being from clay, from dust, from mud. He said so. And then having done that, وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ that, That's what it says. That's what it says. And I, this is first person now, I, first person singular, one of fact, two, first person singular. Otherwise Allah says, we, we did this, we did that, we did that, but here he says, I, I did it. So watch out <laughs> when he says, I did it. One of fact, two, and I breathed it into him from my ruh. Oh, I breathed into him of my ruh. My ruh is divine. And I am breathing something divine into him. And then he said to the angels, فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ Bow down and prostrate before him. So we ask the question, when the angels were asked to bow down and make sijda, prostrate before him, are they prostrating before the clay, the mud? Or are they, uh, are they asked to prostrate before that which is divine? and breathe it into him. Huh? I mean, you have to have a PhD in ignorance. That's what he had, eh? Iblis. <laughs> to come to the conclusion that Allah is asking me to make prostration before the clay. So they all made sijda except Iblis. Then Allah asked Iblis, Iblis, when I ordered you to make sijda to prostrate, why didn't you do it? And then he answered, and this is the answer we want to remember in the politics of Akhiru Zaman. <laughs> in the civilizational struggles of Akhir zaman we must proclaim this truth. He said, oh, but I am superior to him. I am born superior to him. I have a birthright of superiority to him because you created me from fire and you created him from clay. Oh no, Iblis, how can you be so stupid? <laughs> it is not the clay 
that you are asked to bow and prostrate to. Iblis, every human being, by virtue of being a human being, whether he is from Africa and he is black, or he is from Europe and he is white, or he is from China and he is yellow, or he has come from the Arab world and he's light brown, or he's come from India and he's darker brown. And it is a human being. He's a human being. And all human beings, all, every single human being has this in him and her. That Allah has breathed of his ruh. So you miss the boat, Iblis, with your arrogant claim to superiority. So, in this particular clip, did you pick up on the mistake? The mistake was that he claims that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed his divine soul into human beings. This is a mistake. What did he base this on? That the Quran says, وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي I blew into him of my soul. What is the meaning of this verse of the Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي as opposed to وَنَفَخْنَا like وَنَفَخْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ رُوحِنَا regarding Sayyidatuna Maryam alayhi salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we blew into her of, her, of our soul. But with regard to Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي I blew into him of my soul. What is the difference between the two? The correct interpretation of the verse that was mentioned is that whenever the term نَفَخْتُ in the singular first person's form is spoken, it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created that thing without the creation of any asbab, means. When the plural is used, it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created asbab and also created that thing. So, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَفَخْنَا fiha min ruhina," It means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi salam, who then carried the soul of Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam and placed the soul of Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam in the womb of Sayyidatuna Maryam alayhi salam. These are asbab means. But when the soul of Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam was created, it was created directly without any asbab. This is the correct interpretation of the verse. And this is how scholars comment upon this verse. What a Shaykh Imran Hussein has gone and done, he has said that the soul was the divine soul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the meaning of mir ruhina or mir ruhi does not mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a soul. It means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a soul which he placed into Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. As for ruhi, my soul, or our soul, it means like when we say Baytullah, the house of Allah. It doesn't mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lives in a house. It means it is the house created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for human beings to direct their worship. So this is a major mistake which he has made. Believing that divine soul was placed into Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. Also another point of clarification. The wording when some people say. أَوَّلُ مَا خَلَقَ اللَّهُ نُورِي مِن نُورِهِ Quoting a hadith. The first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created was my light. From his light, min nurihi. What does that mean? That min that enters on min nurihi is min ibtidaiya, meaning the creation of the light started at that point. It does not mean it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not composed of parts, is not murakkab. You cannot say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is compounded. So the meaning of min nurihi means from the, his created light, 
which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a special light. It does not mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his divine light out and created the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anyone who says this commits shirk, polytheism. With regard to the hadith of Noor, you can check Kashf al Khafa of Ismail al Ajluni, rahimullah, as a whole takhrij sourcing of the hadith of the Noor of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is disputed by uh, some scholars, but nevertheless, uh, scholars of hadith have cited the hadith as being authentic. And Ismail al Ajluni, rahimullah, and Abdul Hay Laknawi in his book, Al Afar al Marfu'a. Al-Ahadith al he also has a takhrij, a sourcing of the same hadith. The point being, when the word min nurihi, or when in the Quran, mir ruhi, from my soul, does not mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a soul which he placed in Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam. Further down in this clip, Sheikh Imran also says, I wish the Eastern Orthodox Christians could hear what I am saying. Now, the reason being that he has some obsession with the Russian Eastern Orthodox Church, believing them to be different to other Christians. But we as Muslims, we say that all Christians have fallen into shirk, polytheism, by believing in Trinity. Because they believe in Trinity, they have fallen into shirk. So what we will do later is analyze the ahadith of the alliance in the Akhir zaman in the end of times, between a room who are the Romans or the Europeans and the Arabs, meaning the Muslims, at the end of times. Some other points uh, which he mentions in his other videos, one is relating to Amir Muawiyah radiallahu an, the Agreed upon a position of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu an is that he is a companion of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa It is impermissible to curse any companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa He does not curse Amir Muawiyah radiallahu an, but he questions the attempted conquest of Constantinople by Amir Muawiyah radiallahu an. He says regarding that conquest that Amir Muawiyah radiallahu an attempting to conquer Constantinople was something which is objectionable but he fails to mention that major companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa were also involved in the armies, the Arab armies that attempted initially to conquer Constantinople so Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu an was the host of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrived in al madinatul Munawwara he was a part of those armies that attempted to conquer Constantinople and is buried near the citadel of Constantinople so these are objectionable, uh, objectionable points regarding Orthodox Christians that when Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih rahimahullah conquered the city of Constantinople, a Sheikh Imran Hussein says that the martyrs of the conquest of Constantinople were in fact the Eastern Orthodox Christians and not the Muslims who conquered Constantinople. This is also an objectionable point in his creed which a Sheikh Imran Hussein needs to revise and his students need to advise him to revise these points. He must look back on these points and revise these points because they are totally incorrect. A fourth point is him declaring Putin to be the Dhul Qarnain of this time because he believes Putin has stopped the Ya'juj and Ma'juj, Gag and Magag, which is the subject of today's lecture. That he has stopped the Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Who does he believe the Ya'juj and Ma'juj to be? He believes, like some other people, the Ya'juj and Ma'juj to be the Khazar Jews. Who are the Khazar Jews? People like Arthur Kessler, 
who's author of uh, this book, The Thirteenth Tribe. This book, The Thirteenth Tribe. They discussed the Khaza Empire, which was an emp a Turkic, meaning a Turkic race that were called the Khazar, ruled north of the C Caspian Sea. They had an empire which was a buffer zone between the Eastern Orthodox Church and the Muslims in the South. They accepted Judaism in the 9th century. The history of that is detailed in this book, The 13th Tribe. When their empire collapsed, these Khaza Jews, as Arthur Kessler postulates, migrated to Eastern Europe and then Western Europe and then became the ruling families within the Western, the ruling banking families in the Western world. So you have the Rockefeller Foundation, you have the Rothschilds, all these families that supposedly rule and govern the world through the banks. So, Sheikh Imran Hussein ascribes to this theory that these Khaza Jews, remember, believing that the modern Israelis are Khaza Jews, the Israelis would say this is anti-Semitism, anti-Semitic. Of course, they call anything anti-Israel anti-Semitic. But nevertheless, the book makes an interesting read. But a Sheikh Imran Hussein ascribes to this theory that the Khaza Jews are in fact Ya'juj and Ma'juj. That is his position. Because he holds that position, he seems to believe that Putin is holding back the designs of Israel today and therefore the very term Dhul Qarnayn means a king who shall rule in two epochs two times. Meaning he rules during the time when Ya'juj and Ma'juj were placed behind the barrier and a similar kind of ruler rules today. This ruler is called Dhul Qarnayn and in our time, which is the end times, that ruler is Putin. This is why he has an obsession with the Eastern Orthodox Church. But if you read the history of the Khazar Empire, you will notice that they had alliances with the Eastern Orthodox Church. They helped in keeping the Arabs at bay, away from the Eastern Orthodox Church. And the conquest that the Arabs attempted, remember, you have Charlemagne in France who defeated the Arabs, the Muslims, when they entered Spain and they attempted to enter France. Charlemagne was the one who resisted the conquests of the Muslims at that time. That was in the Western region. In the Eastern region, you had the Muslims attempting to enter the Eastern Orthodox Empire, the Roman Empire, and you had the Khaza Jew Empire, which was a buffer zone between the Eastern Orthodox Church Empire and the Muslims in the South. You had the Khazar in the middle. And the Khazar were located just above the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea. So, this is the group of people that he believes to be the Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Uh, 